I'm Rich from Inside HPC, and my guest today is Sharon Kalwani. Sharon, you've been in the HPC industry a while now, and uh, I asked you your, your title before we started here and, and the things you're affiliated with. Uh, what, who is Sharon, and what are you doing these days? Well, these days I uh, am uh, a manager of special projects over at a new university in the Middle East called King Abdullah University of Science and Technology. Yes. It's very new, two years old, but its basis is computational science and modeling. That's one of our pillars. Okay. So, Rich, as I was saying, my uh, perspective will largely be based uh, from a person who came from the industrial commercial manufacturing sector and in the early days when I was running HPC over at General Motors, we used to run it just to see you know, where we fit on the list. Mm -hmm. Then we started realizing quite a few things and after a couple of years, we actually avoided running the top 500 HPL uh, you know, Linpack benchmark. Even though you had a uh, you know, Oh yes, we had substantial. Uh, sure. I can share that in those days we had about 10,000 cores under a single roof. We're talking uh, you know, mid, uh, mid-2000 out here, okay. 2002, 2003. Okay. And when I last left, we had over 17,000 cores. So it was substantial. But what we found out is that um, the benchmark itself for the top 500, it took up several days of a production machine. And we felt that uh, it was very hard for us to explain to the management who bought this machine for improving the car designs, but not only that, accelerating the design process, because every day you saved on design time, you saved several million dollars, yes. and they couldn't understand why you needed sometimes a week just to run a benchmark when they could be you know, having 1,100 engineers running all sorts of simulations sure. in all domains. Sure. So uh, we felt kind of a uh, little bit, uh, you know, we wanted to give the feedback here that yeah. maybe they could think about having couple of varieties of these and one which could act as a litmus test okay. and not take up too much time as these systems grow. Yes. Uh, I think everyone would agree that uh, we, uh, they can continue running it, continue collecting the data, it's worked this far, but there's always room for improvement. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other thing is that it does, it's great for people who are running the same kind of work, but our manufacturing industry workload is quite different than that of the national labs or of the universities. Uh, we were dominated by massive data sets being sucked into the machine. Mm -hmm. um, not just compute, but very, very large memory um, models and systems and all competing for resources. Mm. So uh, this only measures maybe perhaps one third or you know, a fraction of the total capability of the system we You're put talking together. about the LINPAC benchmark. D that's correct, right. yeah. Okay. yeah. So, uh, you know, something that uh, would reflect the large memory, some kind of models of that. So maybe that's another room for improvement mm -hmm. for the LINPAC benchmark, which shows up in the top 500. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, the other thing I would uh, talk about is uh, why limit it to 500? When they first started with this several years ago, they picked a large number and they thought they could encompass everyone in the sure. world. It's been several years and yet systems have grown bigger, uh, floating point operations have grown bigger, yet we're artificially limiting it to the just 500. There's several hundreds of thousands of systems out there. Okay. Okay. So that would be, you know, something. And okay. maybe what we can do is just like uh, the folks who conceived of this, uh, they wanted to know what kind of systems uh, would be for the kind of work they did, and that's fine. Yes. But maybe what we can do is complement that by looking at other industries uh, and seeing what they do and picking something representative for that. And they can continue doing this, but I yeah. think they should spin off, you know, sort of uh, top 500 for specific industries sure. and formulate a workload that would push the boundaries and let them know what those systems are capable of. Okay, so uh, that makes sense. I mean, there's the Fortune 500, there's the Fortune, what is it? 1,000, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. So, yes. Um, but this 500 number, I gotta tell you, is has been picked up by all kinds of others, right? It's, it's gonna, I think it's gonna be the green 500, the, the graph 500, yeah, yeah. So, um, and they can't even fill it. 
those they can't get it well right. so uh, <laughs> that's great that's quite all right <laughs> when yeah. the top 500 was initially right. there they probably had trouble filling it then yeah yeah and now there is uh, a lot more sure. you've got okay all the chinese system japanese asia's yeah. coming up so i think 500 is probably a small number they can still extend it to top 1000 yeah, yeah. and for historical reasons okay. they can always pick okay. 500 for comparison yeah well i was talking to somebody this week about the real they say the real supercomputers are the top 100 but it's mostly the top 50 because that's where it gets really really hard and expensive yes that is that's that fair yeah uh, they could do that, uh, but really what I would say is that let's uh, formulate complementary um, characteristic or workload and maybe start thinking about uh, something for science. Yeah. What kind of science is it producing? Okay. And uh, many of the scientific fields are mature enough. For example, the weather system uh, folks, yeah. Yeah. they can all agree on a common weather benchmark and which sucks in maybe the ocean model, air model, and earth mm -hmm. model, and many other things, right. and then come up with that, and then see, or how many accurate forecasts can they produce with the same resolution, you know, uh, 20 a day, or 24 a day, or something like that. Okay. And that would put that in its correct light. Okay. I okay. mean, l let me give you an example from the same automotive industry. Yeah. The top 500 today, with a single number, it's like classifying all the cars in the world by simply their horsepower. And you won't use a 4x4 oh. four four in a drag race. You won't use a Formula <laughs> 1 car over a rough terrain. Right. So each one has their niche, and yes. they are measured by criteria in their specific envelope or niche. And maybe we should start doing something like this, something like this. for um, you know, our uh, high-performance computing field. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Earl Joseph and the folks at IDC have this, these uh, what is it, these awards things. It sounds like they're kind of going that direction. Yes, the yes. effectiveness of the machine, the uh, return the on investment. Yes, these that things. would be ideal. I think that would resonate with the public a lot more because then they can see these machines doing useful work mm -hmm. for helping to change society. Yeah, and it's time we moved out of all those macho flops <laughs> and went into something where. Society would say this is a value-added tool. They understand telescopes very well. They understand yeah. microscopes. You don't talk about five billion magnification of this. You talk about how many uh, worlds you've discovered in outer space yeah. or how many microbes. And they understand sure, yeah. that and they accept it. Yes. I think we're mature yeah. enough to start thinking about that oh, I, yeah. in this field, which is powerful than either one of these instruments. Yes. It can simulate everything from you know femto level up to you know, as Carl Sagan would say, billions and trillions of, you know, light years. Yeah, I mean, these numbers get so big. We were talking earlier this week uh, about the Exascale article in India, right? The guy yes. basically, he just had, he added about four <laughs> zeros to what was the project was going to be. Uh, so 132 exaflops in, I forget, and that <laughs> for a very good price, actually, if yes. it was, I remember. But, uh, right. uh, but uh, these numbers become just so big, they're meaningless. Right? Meaningless, like the yes. Bat or something. And, and it also shows <coughs> one more thing, that the writer, quite likely a layman in this term, mm -hmm. can easily get confused and put out wrong information. Right. I don't like bad data going yeah. out there and creating the wrong impression. Right, right. I mean, because we're talking about 10 to the 18th now. You know, it's kind of you know a one with eighteen zeros. That's uh, that's you know that's like, what would that you know? Is that the grains of sand in in the world? I mean, or something, or yeah. all the stars in the galaxy? So, it's so all big the now. top five hundred is great. We should yeah. continue it. Yeah. But I think it's time we augmented it. I think it's time we moved it up a level mm -hmm. and made it more understandable to the public. Have correct niches or form you know, worlds in which these machines are delivering real value, real work, okay. that the public can understand. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I really appreciate you coming on the show and sharing Thank your you very much. Yeah, uh, my right. pleasure.